man, that's the voice and the stylings of the one and only citizen of Sway in the morning. Welcome her back, Jesse Reyes. Ladies mm-hmm. and gentlemen, Jesse's back. Jesse. Jesse. Hey, baby girl. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Doing great, Jesse. Uh, mm-hmm. c- congratulations mm-hmm. on everything, man. Uh, you know, Thank what, you. A, what a perfect time to be releasing music. <laughs> you know, because we, we, I had all the time in the world to go through every track, the deluxe version, the Target edition. <laughs> you know, I, I went through every track. Um, where, where, are you quarant- where are you quarantining at? I'm in Toronto right now, man. I'm in Toronto with my family. Yeah, I saw you. You've been doing a lot of work. You've been doing a lot of interviews out there. Is, is that to help? Yeah, man. I ain't yeah. mad at them. I ain't mad at doing interviews from my bed. Let me tell you. <laughs> it's, it's different, right? Like, what do you? What do you like? You don't even have to get dressed. You're not even dressed talking to us. Right. I, didn't want to I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got this straight. No, and I'm out. definitely, I'm definitely in bed in a t-shirt right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I said. You know, they was like, I seen her doing a lot of zooms. Let's just talk on the phone. So she ain't got to brush. Did you brush your teeth for this interview, though, Jesse? <laughs> Well, I, honestly, I haven't been to bed yet, so I brush my teeth to go to bed. But I'm having nocturnal right now, so after this is when I'm finally going to bed. What, what oh wow! That? Yeah. So you. So yeah. you've been up all so night. I brush my what? teeth, but not in the way you think. Like I brush my teeth to go to sleep, not to wake up. <laughs> Damn, so, okay, you wake up with yuck breath then, is what you're saying. Like. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I mean I'm nocturnal. You know when you're going to go to bed, you brush your teeth before you go to bed? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. She does it in the morning, Tracy, I'm sorry. No, okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> can, can I ask we you about a lyric? Clarity. I want to ask you about a lyric um, uh, when you said in Coffin, maybe Buddha got it right, we reincarnate every time. I was... Did I say that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, what did, I, I took that to me. Well, I you know, a lot of times I take people's lyrics and I interpret them my own way to fit my own agenda. And um, I, I feel like in my past I've always kind of, even when a relationship didn't work, um, the next relationship I tend to attract the same kind of energy and therefore it kind of, repeats the same kind of cycle and it's almost like the spirit of relationships for me keep re uh, uh, reincarnating itself the same way what did you mean by when you wrote that lyric i meant that i'd find that the same soul so not so much the spirit of the relationship but the actual like the soul of the person i'm in love with maybe i'll find them in a hundred years in another life and we'll find each other again just to crush at each other all over again and be toxic all over again. In a hundred years, I might find that soul again. So we, we kind of think in the same way. You hear that, Heather? We be on mm-hmm. the same, we be experiencing the same bullshit is what that really means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Recycling toxicity. It's great. It's so healthy. Great Makes for a great album. Tracy G. Did, 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 did yeah. You? How can you Thank share, you. Jesse, a bit? Because I've had plenty of those low moments in my personal romantic life in the past as well. Can you also speak on how you've been able to climb out of that darkness and turn um, that pain into lessons? Honestly, sometimes some days are hard. Like I don't think it's a. It's not a. Um, it's not like a neat, linear progression it looks right. more it, it looks more sporadic because monday and tuesday might be easy and then wednesday is a hard day and then thursday and friday and saturday will be easy and then sunday it might be a hard day um mm-hmm. i'm not i'm i'm not sure to be honest i'm still figuring it out how to deal with old baggage how to deal with demons but being creative definitely helps because at the very least it's making me some money so at least <laughs> word up. <laughs> at the very least, you know. So if you feel a way, draw something, make a painting, put that energy right. towards something that at least at least you can get something out of it. And it doesn't have to be money. It can just like I'm I'm obviously jo- like half joking because I'm kind of happy that I am making money from it too. But like it doesn't have to be money. Like it could legit just be focusing that energy towards something that's going to be productive. You know. So if you're right. gonna ball your eyes out, try to try to ball your eyes out while you clean the house. 
you know? If you're gonna if you're gonna buy your eyes out, try to buy your eyes out while you run a block and go to the gym or something that 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 you can utilize or somewhere that you can utilize it for, for good instead of just wallowing in pain. Word. Amen. Because it is energy and all energy can be recycled yeah. in that way. Speaking on the business yeah. aspect, um, when I was looking through your Instagram and I know how for a lot of people it appears for artists can be very easy to promote your craft. But I find for a lot of creatives um, in the early stages of just sharing their work publicly that it's very uncomfortable to promote yeah. themselves you know it feels very like narcissistic or self-serving yada yada did you experience any of that early on in your career and can you share how maybe creatives can get over that when it comes to selling their products totally i had a really hard time with that especially because the word sellout is like poison like for for anybody that i don't know identifies as a purist that identifies in understanding that art has to be something sacred when you start adding commerce the idea of commerce is something that's sacred it's such a it's such a dangerous dance it's such a dangerous dance man and mm-hmm. i feel like i was fortunate enough to have people on the team that are more focused on that side and i could focus on my strengths you know what I mean, and I'm, that doesn't mean that I'm that I'm not learning as I go. It doesn't mean that I'm not like reading over contracts and getting familiar with like the vernacular that's used in certain meetings and all that stuff, and publishing and splits and everything. That doesn't mean I'm not involved. It just means that I do my best to suspend that, and I think that I, I do my best to suspend that in creation. So I think that that's how I balance it. So, for example, if I'm in the studio and I'm creating, or if I'm in my bedroom and I'm creating, I have to just I'd have to disconnect her emotion and suspend everything else. And that's just the way it works. And I've noticed that any time I try to aim, my shit doesn't come out as, uh, it doesn't come out as potent. It doesn't come out authentic. Any time I try to aim, and aiming can be, oh, make a song about this, or make a song that's going to go viral, or make a song, like, that, that shit just doesn't, it just doesn't, it doesn't work. work. Yeah. It doesn't work for me. It might work for other people, but it doesn't work for me. If I can keep that sacred, then after the fact, it's easier for me to compromise. And you're like, okay, cool. Now that the product, now that, now that it's sealed, it's in a locket. It's contained. The potency, the purity, the purity is contained. Now I can respect the, the the context of the world that I'm in. And the context of the world that I'm in is the music business. My definition is just holy money. It's and it's a it's a what's that called when something's um that contradicts itself? It's an oxymoron. It's an oxymoron, but if yeah. you're in that world, it's just something that you have to accept. So I compromise after the fact. After after I know it's pure, that I'm like, mm. okay, cool. My manager's like, we got to post about it again. You got to post your number. You got to post a swipe up. I'm like, all right, all right, relax, relax. And then you compromise. But after. I love it. But when yeah. I'm making it, I don't compromise. You know, um, I th- you know, Heather B., uh, you often talked about, I don't, I like when an artist talk about the reality of the business because, Heather always talk about the importance of writing and, um, you know, writing your own lyrics. And right now, let's imagine if Jesse Reyes wasn't such a great writer, you know, and we're sitting in quarantine where you can't really perform. You can't go on tour. Uh, you know, you could possibly sell merch online. But those publishing checks, those residual checks um, uh, will help keep you and your family afloat. Because the music is yeah, still going to stream. And that's a reality. Like, artists have to make a living. <laughs> you know, as, as some point. Ass. Yeah, so, and Heather, you always talked about that, too, correct? No, absolutely. You have to, um, hey, how you doing, Jesse? I think that um, you hey. know, this is a good time when you mention if you're going to be going through something, use it for something. You know, don't just sit around and I and to artists I mean not to it it is a slight joke but for artists that don't write and you can't perform right now y'all better be in hell of a shape by the time all of this is over because you ain't got no choice but to be working out and doing something because it's a time to really reflect and look at your business because some artists artists are not doing shows right now a lot of artists can't perform, you know, and because and they, they don't have indoor studios and different things like that. So it's a time to reflect and look at your business. God forbid if something like this happens again, 
um, how are you going to have an income? So I think it's dope, and I applaud you, Jesse, for being a writer, Thank keeping you. your pen game sharp, knowing when you're going through something, mm -hmm. you could use that as an opportunity, a creative opportunity, whether it is to write, to draw, to sing, to put melodies down, because you, you, we have to continue to have some kind of form of income as artists. Um, oh, yeah. Jesse, Thank um, you. Jesse Reyes is on the phone, 888-742-3345. You brought up oxymoron and this title before love came to kill us, you know, uh, love in most interpretations is something that brings life to your life, you know, mm. but this title, mm -hmm. you know, brings energy. It brings brightness is, you know, to be in love. We all at some point romanticize about that. The way you wrote this title before love came to kill us. Can you, Break down the thought process be, uh, behind the title of the album. Sure. Um, the whole the whole concept behind the album was like making something that would trigger. Like after after the songs were done, once I was assembling, because kind of like what I said before, when I'm like when I'm creating, I can't aim. Everything needs to be done and, and encapsulated in the moment, but it can't be. There's no. There's no. Um, form, aim, like grid, nothing. It just needs to be encapsulated and then after the fact, then I start building a bigger picture. So for the album, I knew that I wanted to make something that was going to trigger people into thinking about their mortality. And I wanted something that talks about life life and death, but love and death because life, like you said, life and love is something that's synonymous. Mm -hmm. They go together. So I just interchanged those and then I wanted to, to almost like play with the characteristics and have them switch. Because they do. Because when you think about being the love of your life, the day you meet the love of your life is the day you meet the person that's going to hurt you the worst by default. Because statistically, they're going to cheat. Statistically, they're going to let you down based on the way that shit goes these days. Statistically, that's what's going to happen. And if you're one of the minorities that happen to make it till you're old and gray and you guys put in years and work and loyalty, eventually somebody's got to die first. So no matter what, you don't get out of love life. No matter what, and that's just the grip. That's just the truth. There's no, there, there can't be a happy ending. You get memories, but there can't be a Disney ass ending. But the positive side of death that I wanted to focus on, the positive side of having a mortality right in front of your face, is that it motivates you to live a better life. Like it motivates you not to be a dick. If you were going to be that person that lied to your spouse or lied to your partner or lied to your friend, it might motivate you not to want to do that because you know that 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 it's like it's 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 a gift it's a gift if you're given that you know and you might value it more you might live your life more authentically you might do all that if you're aware of your mortality and aware of how fragile it is the original title was actually going to be you could die tomorrow but okay. you could die tomorrow i feel like automatically has such a negative connotation i feel like it makes your body kind of go into defense because we're human and we want to live you know when we're in the right mind state we want to live and before love came to kill us is actually a lyric that came when I was writing the song "Kill Us." That's one of the songs on the album. Mm -hmm. As I was building the album, so when I wrote that one, and there was that lyric, that lyric stood out to me as something that kind of encompassed everything, but did it in the way that I was trying to do it. Was that like yin and yang, that that being an oxymoron and all its and all its power, you know, being able to mm -hmm. talk about both sides at the same time effortlessly. And I feel like before love came to kill us, does that. Oh shit, yo! What are you reading, sad. Jesse? Yo, yo. What, Woo, what, girl! Oh my gosh, give her a round of applause for her eloquence. Yeah, <laughs> living room <laughs> TED talk right oh there. My <laughs> gosh, Jesus! Yo, what do you read? Like, what are you reading? <laughs> what am I reading? Did you what read? Reading? What book, books are you? I just finished Sapiens a little while ago. Which one? I just finished Sapiens a little while ago. Sapiens, like Homo Sapiens? Oh yes. yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me write and that. I down. have that on my Amazon it's list. Um, it's not bad. Oh, and I and I just finished. Um, oh shoot, I can't remember the title of this one. It's the one that has the orange cover. Oh, um, uh, how, the, I, how, how to learn not to give a fuck or something? Fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. The life book. Yeah. The, the art of not yeah, giving yeah. a fuck. It's, yeah, that's what it is. I just finished that one too. That was good. That was yeah. nice. Hey, um, That's by Mark the, Manson. In the song "Roof," mm -hmm. um, I swear you spitting bars, Jesse. 
<laughs> like I, you, you were MC and at heart. Come on, stop lying. I know you sing and write, but Ooh, you, tell him. You tell were MC. Him. You, you <laughs> were MC. <laughs> you are an MC at heart. Like I'm listening to this song. Like yo, she's fucking spitting bars. Uh, <laughs> can you do a little bit of that verse? Just a little uh, bit, so sure. I know th- where it starts off with uh some uh what do you say um damn, what do you say um, <laughs> I could drive a bench, but I'm still in my all that kind of cocky's in the coma, but I got my time. It be skinny dudes packing those anacondas. I might be petite, but I'm a fucking monster. I got a little <laughs> pop smoking. I'm do that deep in. <laughs> yep, I like that alto, son. <laughs> She's got bars, kid. I'm going to play Roof. We're going to come back, open these phone lines. Jesse Reyes is on the line, 888-742-3345. Pay attention to the bars, because next time she come in the studio, we're going to put a beat underneath her and let her spit a 16. Here's Jesse what? Reyes. <laughs> Let's get it. Sway in the morning, shade four five. Yeah, bars. Yeah, you can tell she write a lot. <laughs> oh, thank you. Who, Jesse? What do you mean by yeah, that? You- you can tell she write a lot because it takes a certain kind of skill set to to a approach a, a song that confidently and then be able to hear like we just had a segment jesse called get in the game where sway has different artists come in who are not known yet but play their music and one of the things that we said to the artist that you know you're rushing through your lyrics where you can't hear everything that you're saying you know you're just trying to hurry up and get through it but even with the style that you delivered on that track you're so confident in it because of your pen game that we heard every single thing that you were able to say is dope and that just comes from practice 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 writing 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 having different you know you may write something today sway as an artist and you may not use it until a month from now but you could go back and be like yo this melody I had, I wrote it down. You know, you just pick up these different um, habits as a writer, and it all came together in that track. It's dope. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, we got Joanna on the line uh, from California. Joanna, say hello to Jesse Reyes. Hello, Jesse Reyes. What's up, Joanna? How you doing? I'm doing good. What's up, guys? I've listened to Jesse. I mean... I've listened to her for years, and her style, her vibe, I mean, the girl makes me fucking cry sometimes. Um, but I listen to Sway mm-hmm. every morning on my way to work. I'm on my way to work right now. Uh, oh, I just want to say God bless you guys. Be safe with this crazy mm-hmm. stuff that's going on. And Jesse, yes, girl, keep making those beautiful music, beautiful songs, beautiful rhythms that everybody be making love to. And I oh, hope and pray one day we get to meet one day and Roll a fatty girl. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <yay. laughs> Me too. <shoot>. Okay. <laughs> Joanna, you a Thank citizen. You. I swear you the morning. That's funny. <laughs> she, <laughs> yo, that's dope. That's good energy right there. That, that's love right there. That you uh-huh. share, especially with the virus going around. You're going to share a fatty. Um, that was a Post joke. Quarantine. Okay. Uh, <laughs> before I let you go, there's another song that... um. It's just a kind of a man. I felt like you. I, I think a song that everybody can relate to. When you was talking about love, you know, the, the closest person to you is going to be the one that's going to hurt you the most. And you take people through a lot of chapters, a lot of scenes in this album. And one of my favorite scenes is the one you experienced with Black on Imported. And uh, mm-hmm. import, Imported is that a, in reference to what is Imported in reference to another? A love, uh, an experience, uh, another person to fill a void. What is imported about? Imported? It was kind of it was one of those doubles. Because first, like, the obvious one is imported because, because shoot, because I'm Latina. And I was born in Canada, but I was living out in the States, but I know a lot of my people do like that. They, they, they travel from Colombia and from Ecuador and from Mexico and, and find a new life somewhere else in hopes of making a better life for the family. So it was a nod to that, to my history, but also natural content, but like lyrical content is about importing somebody into your life. And mm-hmm. sometimes I'm not saying it's the healthiest thing. I'm not saying it's the healthiest thing to to subscribe to be it, like school of thought of, or you can get over somebody if you get under somebody quicker, you know, or you can get over somebody quicker if you get under somebody. Mm-hmm. But... 
sometimes that's the medicine, you know. Sometimes it might not be the healthiest medicine, but sometimes that's the medicine. So you import this new person into your life, you know. They come to the box, you don't really know them, you might have never tasted them, there's something foreign, but shoot, it's gonna do the job while while your like regular stuff, your homegrown stuff isn't there. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's importing somebody in. Importing wow. somebody into your life. That's what I thought my grandmother once told me. Uh, the best way to get over a woman is to get under another one. <laughs> so, uh-huh. <laughs> Short term hey, success. It's, 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 well, listen, at least it's success. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. this, 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 this is a quick fix. Uh, Black is on. I'm going to play that song in a second, but we got Jonathan from Virginia on the line. Jonathan, what's your question? Hey, John. John, you got to turn the radio down. What's your question, Jonathan? Jonathan, listening so hard. Jonathan. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there you go, man. Turn the radio Be down. In the moment, Jonathan. <laughs> Stay present. Okay, what's your question? Yeah, when she going to do like a collab with like Chris Breezy or Drake, one of them type of guys. <laughs> okay. Oh, soon, man. I hope soon. Soon. I will. That's a lit. Have you ever communicated with either one of those, or Chris or Drake, about possibly getting in the studio or, or collaborating? Um, me and Jizzy worked before. Okay. Not with Chris yet, but um, me and Jizzy did. Jizzy obviously, like, man, that's Toronto love. That's Toronto love forever. And that guy's always right, supportive. Right. His whole camp has been supportive and they've looked out for me and shit. So, guy was in the future, you know, should have come out. We know how it goes. People go in the studio and people work and and make a lot of stuff, but it doesn't mean that everything's going to see the light of day. So maybe one day we'll get blessed. Okay. Maybe one uh, day I'll get blessed and we'll come up. We'll see. Well, it's a definite chop tar- a chart topper when it happens, but congratulations. What a well-put-together yeah. project. Give her a big round of applause for me, Adam. Uh, we love thank this young you, lady, Je- you, Jesse you. Reyes. Always 100, man. You are always Indeed. 100. Oh, man. And, and then when you come thank back you, in the I studio. Thank the energy, y'all. Every time, uh, but bring 16 yeah, yeah. bars when you come back in the studio, though. <laughs> okay? All right, I got you. Okay, all right. Here's, all right, take care. Jesse Reyes is imported. Sway in the morning. We got the-